When I originally started looking at the sermon series for this Advent season, I decided to go away from the traditional approach of looking back at the prophets and seeing what they proclaimed. And instead, I planned three services, knowing we would have the cantata, planned three services that would have to do with what it means to worship the Christ child. Now, the first Sunday, I was sick, and Jeff Sweeney generously came on short notice and helped prepare you for the next week. The next week, which we talked about the angels' proclamation and the shepherds' coming to see and encounter Jesus Christ. And we realize that God gathers us just as the angels gathered the shepherds and brings them to encounter God's Word. And like the shepherds, when we encounter God's Word, we go away transformed. We go away with something different. With God working in us to transform our lives in such a way that we will share with other people the good news that God has sent Jesus Christ to be our Savior. Today we skip ahead and move from Luke's Gospel to Matthew's Gospel. Matthew's Gospel is different. In Matthew's Gospel, the angel does not appear to Mary but to Joseph. The genealogy that begins Matthew is different than the gospel according to Luke. But it's an important story. It isn't the shepherds out in the field that are the ones that are sitting waiting when the angels suddenly appear. Matthew's Gospel is the Gospel that includes the story of the star, the great light that shone forth and caught the attention of the wise men, or the magi, or the kings. We know them as all three. But the wise men and the magi encounter the star and they begin a journey. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in the territory of Judea, during the rule of King Herod, Magi came from the east to Jerusalem. They asked, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We have seen his star in the east, and we've come to honor him. When King Herod heard this, he was troubled, and everyone in Jerusalem was troubled with him. He gathered all the chief priests and the legal experts and asked them where the Christ was to be born. They said, In Bethlehem of Judea, for this is what the prophet wrote. You, Bethlehem, land of Judah, by no means are you least among the rulers of Judah, because from you will come one who governs, who will shepherd my people Israel. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with Mary, his mother. Falling to their knees, they honored him. They opened their treasure chest and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. This is the story according to Matthew's Gospel. And it is God's word for us today. Not the poor shepherds in the field, but the wise men. From far away, who are longing to see what this news means. They've seen a star and they are searching for its meaning, searching for the one that it points to. And they travel. We put together our nativity sets and put the wise men right next to the shepherd. But the reality is they probably did not show up for two years. They showed up two years after the birth of Christ. They were willing to wait that long and make a difficult journey searching. Searching for the king of the Jews. 
searching for the king of kings. What are you searching for today? What are you searching for today? What seems to be missing? Are you wrapped up in all of the busyness of Christmas, the buying of gifts, the wrapping of gifts, all that must be done to prepare for company or to prepare to travel? And wondering, am I missing the point? These three men that came took the time to bring their gifts. So like us, they knew what it meant to gather up the right gift. But they knew that they were searching for something. And they knew that others would also be searching for this king of the Jews. They knew that others must be waiting, must be looking for this. Because from far away, we know that this is about to happen, or has happened. And we must go and find him. So they arrive and they ask to see the newborn king. Herod's response is fear, terror. His power is threatened by a new king. The rest of the people are disrupted. They are also fearful. They are unsure of what this means. That the chief priests know the answer. That the prophet has proclaimed that the child will be born in Bethlehem. And he is the one that will shepherd his people. He will govern with peace and justice. And this may be even more terrifying to Herod after all. Because this is a promise of one who governs not, governs not by cruelty, and power, and the abuse of power, but one who will govern by caring for the people of God, for making sure that they are saved from their sin. What are you seeking? What are those around you seeking, and how will you tell them where to find the one that can fill the void in their heart. There are still people seeking today. Seeking to find that which will fill the void in their lives. And we don't have to look far around to see that we try to fill this void with all kinds of things. <coughs> Power, wealth, drugs, alcohol, hobbies, you can probably think of some other things. Friends, uh, this time of year we probably should include football. What are you trying to fill that space with? Do you realize there's something missing? Or have you already found that which fills your heart with joy? That which transforms you into that person that knows that they can cling to God and trust God, that finds peace in even difficult circumstances. Because you know God loves you that much. And that God will not let go of you. That God is your shepherd. The one who comes looking for us when we are in trouble. Who do you know that has gotten in trouble? You, a friend? Someone who needs to be rescued. This is what the Christ was promised to be. The king's wise men, or magi, whichever you prefer to call them, came from afar and recognized how special the Christ child and they knew there was something important about this birth, so they came searching for him. But they brought precious gifts. They brought gifts of gold, myrrh, and frankincense. Most of us know the value of gold. And we have attached meaning to myrrh and frankincense.
frankincense, myrrh, a spice that was used to anoint bodies at death. Incense, frankincense, a spice that was used to create a pleasant aroma to God in worship. But we may miss just how valuable these gifts are. The other morning, Daryl forwarded me a story from uh, Popular Science, I think it was. It was a story about the value of myrrh and frankincense in the ancient world. It was so valuable in Egypt that they sent people looking for this, for this resin, for the tree that produced this resin, hoping to maybe find a way to cultivate it at home so that they didn't have to travel or pay the exorbitant prices for it. Its value is equivalent to the gold. These were special gifts, the best that they could bring, the most expensive gifts that they could bring. And they brought them to lay before the Christ child. When we come and worship, we are gathered by God in ways that help us fill that void. Ways that help us in the midst of our seeking. We have the opportunity to proclaim good news. Our praise songs, like the angels. We have the opportunity to encounter the Christ child like the shepherds. And then, in a normal pattern of worship, we respond to what God has already done. How do we respond? We bring our gifts and lay before God. We bring our gifts, part of what God has given as an offering to God. But it's not just the gifts that we bring, it's the time, the intention, the willingness to put our lives on hold to give our lives to Christ. That may mean that we stop and notice someone else who's seeking, and we began the gathering process with God by inviting them to come to church. That may mean that we notice someone who's hurting and we're attentive enough to sit and listen. That may mean that we are so attentive that we join in someone else's gladness. The Christmas season is full of all kinds of emotions. Those who are joyfully worshiping God, those who are mourning, those who are worried about how they'll make ends meet, how they will provide for their families, those who, like children, embrace the season filled with joy and excitement, eager anticipation. Where will you find yourself in the story of this year? Are you as attentive as the Magi, looking to see where you might see Christ, looking for signs of what God is at work doing? The Magi and the shepherds end up coming to worship the Christ child and are changed by their encounter with the Word, their encounter with Jesus Christ, because they were open to what God was showing them, to what God was doing in the midst of their own daily lives. Whether it was observing the stars and looking up at this night sky in the field, or whether it was examining the night sky and the position of the stars, seeking answers. They were 
both be observant and attentive. And in their willingness to be attentive, in their willingness to be open to what God was doing, God called them out of their usual everyday lives and brought them into an experience of encountering Jesus Christ. Last week we heard the shepherds, or the week before last, we heard about the shepherds who went back to their fields, went back to their, their, what they had been doing, but they couldn't help stopping along the way to tell everyone about the Christ child. In a couple of weeks, we will hear more about what happens with the wise men or what happens after the wise men's visit. Part of what's important to note is they go back by a different way. They are so transformed by the Christ child, they will not let the powers of this world retain their power. They go a different way. All of this has to do with how we worship. We're gathered together to God. Something deep within us draws us to come and gather and to experience the power of Jesus Christ in our lives. And in that encounter, we are transformed into those who go back a different way, because we will not let the world remain as it is. Or we are those that go back and cannot help but to tell everyone what we have encountered. Sometimes we forget this part of going back and offering the gift of our witness to others. But just as our offering so our offering of our story is. It makes us feel vulnerable. We may feel vulnerable giving a part of what God has given us back to God. But sometimes it is even more vulnerable to share the story of what God is work doing in our lives. that lets us have hope, peace, joy, and love. Maybe what's missing is the sharing of the story. What could you tell someone about the difference encountering Jesus Christ has made in your own life? How will you respond to your encounter with Jesus Christ? What will you offer back? What gift will you bring? What gift will you share? For once we've encountered the Christ child, we are never the same. Let us pray. Gracious and merciful God, from the far extremes of the social status scale, from dirty shepherds in the field to wise men who studied the stars and had access to gold, frankincense, and myrrh. You have shown your people your love by coming to be God with us. As we encounter you, transform our hearts that we may go boldly forth into the world to continue encountering Jesus in ways that continue to write our story anew. Sometimes we're tempted to hide that story. Instead, make us attentive enough to see those who need to hear it. And may we share it in our words and our deeds in simply our presence. 
as we come and bow before the King of Kings. A babe in a manger, a young toddler, who chose to come to earth and show us your way. Amen.